Hello and welcome to a new video in Practical Sheets. Today we continue our series in Stock Management or Inventory Management. In part one, we did a very, very simple stock management system where we had a product list, where we had an input slash output table where I could choose my products from here and then choose a date and the units that go out or go in. And finally, I had a summary where I could easily see how many had gone in, how many had gone out, and how many I had left, basically subtracting the output from the input for each product. That's it. Before we begin, I wanted to fix something that someone in the comments of the first video showed me, an error that was left in the first video in the stock sheet. And is this. I'm going to put a bit of zoom in. In my stock sheet, in the cell A2, I have this filter. Input output from A to A, where C to C is input. It looks good. The problem is when I have two inputs. For example, here, I have one tool t-shirt, another tool t-shirt here it repeats itself so filter is not the best way to do it so there are two ways of fixing this the first one if we remember my logic behind this was that i only want products that i have input in theory it makes a lot of sense but in practice sometimes you uh, are selling product before you have it in in your stock you can have um a drop shipping model or something like that and this condition may not prove necessary okay so if you like this condition that you can only show it if you have inputted something you have bought something then just we can leave it like this and wrap it in a unique function and that's it you can press enter and it automatically fills the the closing parenthesis and we fix our problem. And we can go even further. For example, we could have a sort function so we can sort it in, in alphabetical order. Again, enter. This is an option, okay? The other option is that we can remove this input condition altogether so we don't need the filter. We can remove this filter remove this condition and this parenthesis and that's it we'll just have a unique function wrapped in a sort function so both ways could work again thank you so much for letting me know the mistake and hopefully you get here and catch it before you start filling out more information today what we're going to do is add some things the first thing we're going to add is some new product to see what are the main challenges once we have more and more records? So let's add some products I previously wrote. I'll also paste some new inputs and outputs here. And then we can go here to our stock and check that everything is working fine, that it brings automatically the new products here. I'm seeing a first error is that I forgot to to drag down this output in the last video up to the to the last one and so I'm going to paste control C then select with control shift down and finally paste with control V maybe at the beginning you can delete some of the rows so that you don't have that much rows but normally your stock will look something like this many more products a lot of inputs and outputs with the summary looking like this so today we're going to add some new things to my product this is very simple but normally i will have for example a category here this could be done in many ways one way could be that if i were right here t-shirt then automatically this will bring the last word your t-shirt here's hoodie here's poster so this is one way the other way is that i select because many, many times the name won't say the category. 
So maybe we can we can have a drop down for selecting the category. So we're going to add a new sheet. It's called list. And in this list, I'm going to have my category. And right now I only have three categories: t-shirt, hoodie, and poster. You can bring this at the end because it's just an auxiliary sheet. And later we can hide it. So here we're going to select down with control shift down. Right click, go to data validation. That if you are used to sheets, you can see that these menus have changed a bit in the last days, being in November 2021. So it just changed, they order it a bit better. So we're going to go to data validation. Select this from a range, and then we're going to select our range that will be list from A2, and we can go down to leave it open to the last row of A that exists in this sheet. We can tell it to reject the input, save, and we can choose our t-shirt, paste it. And here are hoodie and paste it, and here are posters. And Paste. We could also add a lot of things here. For example, we have a t-shirt. So t-shirts may have some sizes, M, L, S, XL. So because in our first example, this was a very simple file where we just have the product and that's it. But the reality is that we may have a size, we may have a color. So again, this could be a list or sizes and of our colors. Let's say we're a very simple company. We just have black, red, and white because it's just the background. So we're going to do data validation. As I told you before, this has changed in November 2021. So it's a bit weird mm, to get used to the first time. So here we go, data validation. This from a range, it will be my list from B2 to B. Let's reject again. And the same for color. Finally, we'll take this, select these two cells, Control Shift down and then Control D to duplicate. Here we have our size. Let's say all of my products are large for now. The posters, we can leave it empty. The color, let's say, all of them are black for now. This may work in the future if we need, especially in our dashboards, how we can group them by size, by color. And this may prove a bit more tricky to do our stock once we have different, for example, we could have the same product with different colors, with different sizes. So. I think to take into account is how we're going to manage the reference because you can say that the reference is TS001, but for but for large is TS001L and for medium is TS001M and the same for the colors. So this is a thing to, to just have in your minds for the future. For now, we're just going to have one product each, so it won't be a problem. Okay. The thing that may interest us is the cost and the price that we're going to focus today. So let's say here, we're going to first do a, a very basic approximation to cost and price. That may not be the most realistic, but it's a starting point. So this is the price in which I buy, and this is the price in which I sell. So let's say my t-shirts cost, or if I buy them to already made, I buy them at $5 each. And my hoodies, I buy them at $7 each. And my posters, I buy them at $4 each. And then the prices in, may, may differ, but let's say for now, all of them, I buy them at 11 and the hoodies at 15 and the posters at 10 and Then we could differentiate and put different prices, but this is not the point. I could have here, here some formatting. If I want, that's it. I just completed a bit more my product sheet. 
In the last video, we did it selecting our reference. We'll continue doing it like this, but you can see right now why it may be a problem in the future when we have a lot of product to memorize. This all depends on how you're going to input the data in the input output sheet. Because if you're going to do it manually, maybe this is not the best way. And the best way, the quickest way would be to select the title or the name of the product. But if you're doing it with a code reading machine, or another method, maybe this continues to be the best way. So the first thing that we can see when there are a lot of inputs and outputs is that here I lose my header. So the first thing we're going to do is to freeze my header. There are a lot of ways of doing this. Here in view freeze, I can freeze the first row or we could just stand here in the first row, see this hand that appears and then just drag it down to the first row. So this looks nicer. The same for here. I could do it also in my product, in my product sheet. You can choose what you want to include in your input out. Maybe for now, it's not necessary to include the size, the color, and the category for now in my input out, but the custom price, it may prove important in the future. So. I'm going to here insert one column, two columns, and put my cost slash price. This is when having one sheet may be a bit complicated. So let's see how long can we stand having just one sheet. Maybe the easier way is to have one for input and one for output. So I think that in the long run, it's better for me. Personally, I like it better to have it separately, but I know that a lot of people prefer to have it in one place. So for example, here, when there are a lot of more particular things regarding the sales and the purchases, it may start to prove more difficult to sustain this one sheet. So then let's see how long can we do it. So this is the cost price. The first approach, as I told you, is a very simple one, is that the cost will never change and the price will never change. In some products, this may happen. For example, in my Google Sheets Academy, the price of a course normally will stay the same forever. So depending on the product, prices won't change that much. And if that's the case, maybe there's no need to go to a more complicated scheme of pricing and costing. But there are other more variable products that each year, each month, each quarter, the price and the cost will change, or maybe in each order or each day, even the prices and the costs will change. So the way we're going to do it won't work that well for markets or products where the price and the cost will change that much. We may look at this in next videos and probably have to, to add some code to make a more precise cost and price approximation, but this is our first draft, let's say. So how are we going to bring the cost and the price? Given that we already have it here, then the easiest way is to do a VLOOKUP as we did in the last time. So with an if, so if this, if this is input, then we'll bring the cost. And if this is output, we'll bring the price for this product or this reference, and that's it. So let's do it. VLOOKUP of this reference in our product. We're going to choose all this table. And the one we need is the column F. We need to count from the A up to the F. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's the sixth column. And we normally leave the last argument as zero. That means exact search. So I need to change this format. Again, we can change it to accounting and we may need to remove the data validations to remove this warning. The thing is if, that if I leave it like this, it will always bring the, the cost and I need the price. So here we're going to add an if, that if this cell contains the word input, then let's do this. But if it contains the word output, that is the only other option we have, 
Then we'll do the same VLOOKUP, but not in the column 6, but in the column 7. Let's close this. And let's drag it down a bit. Just to see that it works. And it works perfectly. So let's do now our total. It's just multiplying the units and the cost price. Here I, already, I have it already. We can paste the format and again remove the data validations. Let's drag it down a bit to see that everything's working fine. Finally, we're going to choose these two cells, go down with Ctrl Shift down and duplicate with Ctrl D. The thing about this is that it, this also happened to us in the last video that we have these errors at the end. So we, we may need to wrap this with both functions in a if error function. So let's say that if error, all of this, then just leave it blank. Let's drag it down just until one of the errors to see that it works. And automatically this leaves it at zero, but I don't like it in zero. Maybe it's better just to have it blank also. But here it won't work with if error because multiplying nothing by nothing is not an error, it's just zero. So it may be better to do if this cell is blank, then leave this other cell blank. If it's not blank, then do the multiplication. Let's drag it down and it's blank, so it's perfect. So now, now let's select these two cells, Ctrl Shift down and Ctrl T. And it looks very good. Okay, this is it. And the last thing we need to do is to, to update our stock with the cost and the price. So this won't change. The only thing we need to do is insert the column to the right and just have the cost of my stock. Again, this is where we can have another discussion because the methodology for doing the inventory cost evaluation or assessment may change and in different industries it may be different and people that know about this a lot know that this has a lot of theories. So here we're just going to keep it very simple again and just multiply the stock by the cost. That's it. It may be a simplistic way of looking at it at the beginning and it may prove more difficult once the cost starts to change. But for now, it works very well just to multiply the stock for the cost. What we need to know is how much do we have in our warehouse or in our apartment or wherever we stock the product, how much does it cost? And one of the most conservative approach is to just multiply the units by its purchase cost. So we're going to look again with a VLOOKUP for the cost of this reference. It's the same thing we did in the input output sheet and in the column six. If these are zero. And finally, we multiply it by the stock. Let's out of fill and give some format. And that's it. This is the cost of our stock. Let's see how this uh, looks in the in the blank cell. So it doesn't look good. So we need to wrap this again in an if error function as we did last time. Again. Now it looks good. Now I can drag it down. Control Shift down two times and Control D just to have our formulas in all my cells. And that's it. What I wanted to do today was basically adding the cost and the price that it may prove useful to you. We have a lot of ways to go, a lot of things we can add. Just let me know in the comments, how can we continue to develop this project? You can support me in my Patreon page and you can also access templates in this Patreon page. So you don't have to start from scratch if you don't want to, or you can subscribe and hit the notification button so you can check the new videos each week. Thank you so much. See you next time.